Today I think I'm going to switch things up a bit. Huh? Huh? Bad pun. Now here's everything that we're going to install. And we have our switch plate here for the 1005. I have two voltmeters we're going to install. One for the main battery, one for the auxiliary battery, and then my switch for the winch that I have on, KFI Stealth Winch. Now you can have these switch plates ordered for a bunch of different configurations, however you want. As far as you can have more switch blanks put in, more gauge blanks put in. You can have a hole here cut for the Jensen round radio. And all these plates are made out of 16 gauge steel. They're laser cut, so all your cuts are nice, smooth, and precise. There's no jagged edges or roughness to them. And then they're powder coated, so they have a tough, durable finish that's going to last the life of the machine. All right, so the switch plate panel for the 1005 is going to go right here. As you can see, I've already removed the big, bright, in-your-face warning panel that comes on these. So that's where this plate goes for this. Now, as you can see here, again, the holes that Justin cuts in these lines right up with the old holes, which will make it easy to install this. So same as the 500, all we're going to do is to cut our plastic out to allow the switches to pass through. I'm going to hold my plate up here, line up my mounting holes, kind of center it here in the opening a bit as best as I can. And then I'm going to go ahead and trace here. Whee! Whee! Now these two center holes will have to be drilled out too as there are no holes there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark them as well. So then I know where I can drill some... I guess there is one here at the bottom, but the one at the top's not there. Cut. <laughs> Don't need hammer drill. <laughs> oh, I need a saw. Now, even though I know there's nothing behind this, there is just that, that little bit of fear when you ever you cut into a $17,000 machine like this, especially because I haven't even had this for a year yet. It's like, oh, I hope I don't do anything to it. But that's all part of customizing. Sorry for you staring at the back of my head. Hey. Okay. Ma, I made a hole. Check and make sure we got enough clearance. Clearance. Ooh, I like it. All right, drill these holes. Oh, plastic shavings all over, making a mess. All right, so now I have some. I got my wires run from the battery. Now what I'm going to do is we have the power from the battery, which is going to get hooked up here into the switch. Now when your four post switches like this, usually the bottom and the top are what's separated. So like I say, if I hook my power up to the bottom, it's going to be off until I hit the switch, which is going to connect the lower and the upper, and then that'll feed power out of the switch. So my power into the switch, I'm going to hook up here to the bottom, and then I will have a jumper cable run from the upper post, which will run power then when I flick my switch. Now the power, the circuit's complete, the power will go through here, and that'll run just right over here and into where my voltmeter is going to be. Now I need to make sure I get my ring here that will tighten my voltmeter on the wires on the back side, otherwise I'll have no way to fasten it. Now your voltmeters have usually marked plus and a minus there, so my power wire, of course, is going to go to the positive terminal. The minus is going to go on my black wire here, which is my negative on my battery terminal. We'll give her a test run, hit the switch. Comes on, 12.8. So now we'll line this up. Push her in the hole, and then I'll tighten the 
the securing in the back to make sure she doesn't go anywhere. So now it's just the exact same process for the secondary battery. All right, so here we go. We got the 1000 switch plate all in and buttoned up. Again, I put both my voltmeters on switches so that I can turn them on and off as need be. So now no matter what accessories we run, we'll be able to keep an eye on our batteries to make sure we're not overstraining the system. So as far as installation on the switch plate panels themselves, super easy to do. The most involved thing is having to cut out the plastic of the dash for where your switches or gauges or whatever you're installing in the panels themselves have to go. The only tools you need for the panels is a drill bit to drill out the rivets of the factory warning plates some kind of saw in order to cut that plastic out and then somehow to fasten the plates either screws bolts rivets you know i leave that up to you guys whatever you want or whatever you have lying around that'll work like them screws that i use are just screws i had lying around that work perfectly for now so if you guys want to pick up a panel for your own pioneer then you can get a hold of justin either by going to his facebook page which is pioneer switch panels and accessories which i'll leave a link in my description below that'll take you right there or if you're a member of the Honda Side-by-Side -Side Club, he is username Mystic1219 on there. So you can send him a message through the forum. And Justin usually keeps various layouts of his plates on hand, ready to ship. If you need something specific, then all you have to do is let him know and he can tailor the panel to fit your needs. Again, that's Pioneer Switch Panels and Accessories. It's a great product that can fit anyone's budget. Until next time, guys, it doesn't matter what you ride, as long as you ride. So keep on riding. Wunderbar!